Okay, so hi everyone. Like Mr. Royton said, my name is Ariana. Thank you for tuning in. So I'll basically split the discussion today into two groups. It's my experience with IB and the process of applying to an American university, which is very, very lengthy. So if you have any questions, maybe just save them towards the end and I'll do my best to answer everything. Okay, so for IB classes, um, I chose many different courses at the beginning of the year, so I switched them around. But what I finished with was business, biology, and literature for my HL. This, this made sense because that's what I wanted as a major. Um, when I said that I wanted to go to university in the US, I saw that there's a difference between a business major and an economics one, whereas in the UK or in Europe in general, economics is generally preferred because business is seen as a softer subject. In the US, it's not the case, so definitely decide between those two. I'm pretty sure most of you have already. And then biology was just something that I enjoyed. I thought that it would look good on my application that I chose a science, and it is usually easier than the other ones. And then literature, because essays are very, very important. I mean, I think you guys know with the IAs, extended essays, you have to write a lot, especially for your university application. So it's a good skill to learn how to write better, how to analyze, and how to see the meaning behind what's initially presented to you. And for my SLs, I went for math. Initially, I did math HL for one semester, then I, I dropped it. Math isn't really my strong point. And even now, university, so my, my major is business. Concentration is accounting and marketing. What I did in math SL was more than enough. Um, you will need a bit more statistics, but it's nothing to worry about. Your professors will explain it. So don't worry if you're doing math SL and people are saying you need math HL. And then psychology, again, it was fun. I think it's useful to know how to read and understand people a bit better, especially if you end up having an interview. It's good to pick up on certain signs and like cues of what you should be doing and how you should be sitting and just reading people better. And then French, just because it's always good to know a foreign language. So I definitely recommend that. Um, Ariana, and I think I'm sorry for yeah. Uh, there is a person, Mr. Recep, Recep Yolcu. Can you please uh, admit him? He's waiting in the waiting room. You are the host, I cannot do Sure. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. Thank you. I think they're in. Okay, and then CAS, I think most of you are already very well inversed in what CAS is. It, it does appear to be a pain initially. I, I know that I, I did CAS. I, kind of put it off my mind for the first semester, didn't really focus on it too much. But I realized that the point where you start seeing CAS not as an obligation for IB, but more as an opportunity for you to just start doing something with your time, it becomes less of a burden. I know it's something that you don't really want to be doing right now, but don't leave it towards the end. So for example, for creativity, I chose to learn how to play the guitar because I don't really know how to play an instrument, so I thought it would be interesting just to have that extra skill. Um, one of my friends, he taught me during common hour. So I know most of you don't really do anything during common hour. I doubt you're studying a lot. So maybe just use that forecast. It's a very easy way to save time at home. And then I also took sketching classes because it's something I enjoy and I'm relatively good at. For activity, it's something very simple. I um, went to the gym a lot and then I learned how to cycle. I didn't really learn as a kid, so that was an opportunity for me. And then the service part was my personal favorite. This helped me a lot when I applied to university because they care a lot about what you do for your community because universities like to see the fact that if they admit you, you're going to be an asset to their community. So if you're doing something to help people without really getting anything in return, it just looks so much better on your application. So this that I did, Touch Foundation, was actually offered by ISB. So they helped me with that. They introduced the Touch Foundation to us. It's basically two groups. One of them goes to a hospital, I think it's Wundeng, where you work with um, children who have cancer. So it's a very noble cause. And then the second one, which is what I did, was at Casa Aga, which is it's a home for single mothers and children. They usually need things like helping the kids do their homework or just going for a walk with them, anything you can do to help those families. So again, it's a very, very noble cause. And then what I did in year 13 was an internship at Tenmar. It's an energy company. 
I think I focused on renewable energy sources. I basically did research on it, how to introduce more renewable sources into their business plan. And then the final thing I did was the CAS project. Some of you might remember it. We had a, um, a bracelet sale in the lobby of ISB. We just sold handmade bracelets and then the proceeds were all donated to charity. So again, it's a very, it's a very touching thing to do. They like seeing that you care about other people, that you're, I don't know, willing to help out and just do something that's completely selfless. And um, okay, I'll talk about the other parts of IB. Um, none of these were particularly fun, I'm going to be honest, but they were useful. I'm, I have to say they are useful. For example, the IAs, at their core, what they basically are is an investigation that you have to conduct. And for now, half of my essays in university have been investigations. So the fact that you can get kind of a head start to learn how to plan out an investigation, how to gather data, how to source it properly. I, I needed that a lot, especially in my first semester. So for this year, I had a mandatory class. It's called Business and Society. All freshmen have to take it. And the final paper that was 30% of the final grade was basically find a problem with a business and then solve it. It has to be completely original, unique idea, your own data, nothing taken from the internet. So without the IA, I think that I would have struggled a lot more than I did. And then the extended essay, again, it's, it's an important part. It's a bit lengthier, which is good to get used to because most of my essays now are around 4,000 words, which you don't really have in high school. So this is a good learning experience for you. Again, I did it in um, business, and it was the exact idea of my essay that I had for university, find a business, identify a problem, and then solve it in an original way. So it was. It was basically a draft for my university essay, which is useful. TOK, I personally don't think I can say a lot about it because I didn't really get the grade I wanted for the essay. I thought it was a good one. I guess it wasn't, according to IAB. But um, I know I went into it thinking that it's an essay where I can focus on something that I like and be philosophical and creative about it. It's, it's not the case. I mean, have fun with it, but do follow the guidelines. I know there's the areas of knowledge and ways of knowing. I think you still have those. Really focus on those. That's what they're looking for. It's not really your opinion that matters. It's more how well can you present us what we're really asking for. And then the group for project, this one I think was the easiest and most fun project out of all the ones that are on this slide. Um, you basically work with a bunch of different people that aren't necessarily your friends. They could be, but you know, it's not mandatory. And you just kind of put your minds together to make this sort of fun science project, nothing too complex. I think we, um, as an idea, we just had a bunch of students from our year group run before and after drinking coffee with different concentrations of caffeine. And then we just measured their speed. So it's, Nothing really complex, but it was really quick. It was a fun day. We made a poster. So again, I think have fun with any of the components of IB because they really don't have to be a burden unless you make them a burden, which is what I admittedly did up to a point. So don't follow my example specifically. And then this part, I think you've all heard already, but I'm here to basically confirm that the IB can be useful for university. It all depends on your mindset and how well you actually work with it not against it so there is an intense workload i i definitely remember that it's a lot to do with the big shift from igcsc to ib but it does prepare you for the even bigger workload in university i mean you get used to having to write essays regularly there's not a single day where you just have free time and nothing to do because there's always a book that needs reading or some kind of data to analyze whatever your major is. And I think this is just a good way for you to kind of get into that mindset of I have work to do and just getting on with it. I mean, I think I made a, a list so far in this year, we've had 33 books to read and then my major is business. So it's not English or literature. So what I'm trying to say is that really get to reading. It's, it's a pretty fun thing to do if you like the books. And then I think I already kind of touched on this, the IAs and the extended essay, they prepare you for the investigative essays. It's a way for you to kind of get away from just Googling anything you want to look into. It's more for you to just get firsthand data and learn what it takes to really 
I don't know, source it properly, work with people, get permission, because it can be a legal issue if you, for example, record someone without permission. So all of these things I, I already knew when we went into the workload this year for university. Some students struggle with it. They had no idea how to draft a letter of permission or how to gather someone's data, how to, I don't know, group it, for example. So it is useful. And then CAS, at the beginning, it was, I didn't like CAS. I thought it was very, very useful because it doesn't really contribute to any point. It's more just like a checklist thing. But it does kind of force you to try out new things, which is something that universities like. Because if you're applying to a competitive university, think that thousands of students in the world probably have the same grades that you do. So what makes you so different from them? And if you engage in something you like, you're probably going to be pretty good at it. So I would definitely recommend that you kind of push yourself to not really waste time. I know that Netflix and going out is fun and everything, but this does help you in the long run. And it doesn't have to be boring. I mean, if what you're good at is producing music or a sport or whatever, maybe just spend a bit more time on those than on just relaxing a bit or just doing your homework, for example. And then what's my last one? Oh, American universities, I didn't know this. They have a core curriculum, which is very similar to the IB requirements. So you have to have a math class, um, a science class, and then electives. I think someone else is talking. Okay. Is someone listening to something? Until now, we do not have any questions, and it's going very well, I guess. We can move on, yeah. No, no, I, I can, someone has an audio on. So you hear some people talking, you say? No, not really. Uh, okay, wait, let me see. Okay, it stopped. I think someone was listening to something. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, the last part, the core curriculum, right? So math, sciences, and something we call electives are mandatory. It doesn't matter what your major is. The entire school has to do these things. In the IAB, the main difference between um, A-levels and IAB was that you have to take courses you don't necessarily want or need, which I didn't really like because I thought, why do I need a science when I'm taking business? But then I came to university and saw the requirements and I needed a science class. But because I took biology in high school, it was very easy. I didn't even have to study at all. So if you're looking at applying to the U.S., then the IB is pretty much the preferred option compared to um, A-levels, for example. Okay, um, I'll move on to my experience with applying to university in the U.S. and getting in. So I go to NYU. It's the Stern School of Business. Um, a small note about this, I think it's important that if you look at to apply university in the U.S., they all have different schools, so you need to find the one that's specific to you and your major. I didn't really do that because I didn't know. I thought you just applied to the university, and then the admissions department actually transferred me into Stern, which is a good thing because they're a bit more competitive than the other school I applied to, so it all worked out. And this is the application process. It's, it's very lengthy. It took me a lot of time to figure it out because no one was really there to tell me what I have to do. I mean, I think this is good for you guys because I'm here to show you the steps and the checklist. I didn't have this. It just made things so much harder and complicated. So the first thing you want to do is take your SCT or ACT. These are two different tests. You have to choose between them. The SAT is basically just math, writing, and reading comprehension. It's a very easy test, but don't let that fool you because I saw the questions, they're very basic standard, kind of year 11 math and English, but you're very, very tight on time. You basically have under half a minute per point. So you wanna learn how to move very, very quickly through it. And then the ACT is the same as the SAT, but you have another section that's science. So if your major is something in the sciences or even engineering, I would recommend the ACT. They're the same in like, terms of how hard they are. It just depends if you want science or not. And then the SAT subject test, these are like individual course exams. You can take them in math, English, a foreign language, history. There's a bunch of options. Make sure you read about what the university is asking for because they have specific requirements. Some of them just want the SAT, which I think most of them actually want the SAT. 
And then the subtests are optional, usually recommended. Only a couple, like the top tier universities, require them. I took them in math. Um, there's two levels, a more advanced one and an easy one. I go for the advanced one just because it's not that much harder, and I think it just looks better on application. And I also did um, literature, so you can choose whatever you want. And then to apply, you need to use the common application or coalition. I don't recommend coalition. I think it's just a much more complicated system. So definitely go for the common app. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, you just fill in your personal data, your transcripts, um, any achievements you have, which is very important. That's a big chunk of your application, talking about what you did in the past Three years, I wouldn't focus too much on going further than that because a lot of time has passed. So if you won a competition in seventh grade or in primary school, they don't really care about that. Just go for what's recent and what's notable about you. And then your essays, this is a very hefty chunk of it, I think. It's really important. Put a lot of time aside for your essays. I, I didn't do that because I thought that I work better under stress, and if I leave them to the last minute, then they'd be better because they're coming from the heart. I don't know what my logic was. Don't don't follow that. Really start in advance and make sure you know what each university is asking because the application is different from the UK and European one in general. So you have something similar to a personal statement. It's a bit longer. Mine was about two pages long, and you write whatever you want. It can be about you can be about a memory of your something that happened in your life you can even talk about COVID I mean anything just how it shaped you into the person you are today and then each university has its own little essay requirements they all differ some universities had about eight small short essays about 200 words and then the big one some universities had just an additional extra long essay about a thousand words I think I'm not sure look into it and the essays are important because they tend to be two things one is a creative prompt so something that should inspire you to just be original and the second one is mostly why this university and that's a question you have to know the answer to because just saying that oh your university ranks very highly it has a good program that's something that thousands of students say annually so after your examiner puts down your application why will you be memorable? That's what has to be in your mind at all times. I think that the most fun essay prompt I had was for the University of Chicago. Um, the one I wrote about was something along the lines of you're on a boat sailing towards another land and then you fall off the edge of the earth. What's your reaction? And then that's an essay. It's a university essay. I think another prompt they had was you write a letter to an inanimate object or a tree. What's in your letter? So it's not, it's not just about tell me if you're smart. It's more like how can you make this story so interesting that you're memorable to the person reading that, pe that paper. So I think my essays worked. I just got into NYU and New Chicago. Um, what made me go for NYU was the, the scholarship offer. It was a lot better for NYU, so I just went with that one. That's another factor you have to keep in mind. I'll talk a bit more about finances in the next slide. And then recommendation letters, these aren't really up to you, except that you have to really carefully choose your teacher. They have to be someone who knows you, someone you've talked beyond maybe class. So I go for someone who's just a friend and a teacher to you. So you can't really read your recommendation letters. It's, it's not allowed. So I don't know, maybe ask your teachers if they say no, don't push it. Just trust them that they'll write the best they can about you. You can give them some tips though, like what to mention. Please tell them not to put things like a team player, hard worker, excellent student, because again, these apply to about half the population of students in the world, so it's nothing special. A good word I would have that your teacher might want to include is empathy. If they can say that you're in, uh, you have empathy for other students, that's a really strong point that's not really brought up in university. But it shows universities that you would be a good asset to your community because you're capable of bringing people together and just encouraging other people in the future to apply. So recommend that. That's a tip. And then the least fun part is you have to pay the application fee. So all universities in the U.S. cost money to apply to. It doesn't matter if you get in or not. You still have to pay the fee. It's 
around $90, give or take five, I think. It depends. Um, you have to pay that before you send in your application. So you don't have a restriction on how many universities you can apply to. It's not like the UK can apply to 20 if you want to, but do keep in mind the fees. So maybe just choose between them. And then afterwards, you have the CSS profile. If you are an American citizen, I'm not sure if any of you are, um, you don't need this one. You have to apply for FAFSA, which is federal aid. If you are international like me, though, CSS profile is available on College Board. It's basically a very, very long document of questions about your family's finances, any assets, properties, whatever it is that you own, you have to write in there and then provide things like tax returns and just evidence of this money, including savings, bank statements. It's a lot. You're going to need your parents. Um, if your parents are divorced, like in my case, you need two different applications. So I completed one for myself and my mother because I live with her. And then my father had to complete a separate one. Each one costs $25. So just know that there's a fee for this as well. And please don't, don't lie in what you write in the CSS profile because if you write that your family owns less than you do, if you do get into university, your financial aid offer, your scholarships are going to be significantly less, significantly less, right? Because they don't really want to admit students who can't afford to go to the U.S. The budget for international students is a lot less than for American citizens because for U.S. citizens, the scholarships come from mostly the government, it's federal aid, and from some private donors. Whereas for international students, all the budget comes from is just small private don donations. So the budget is significantly smaller. Just have that in mind, maybe. If you write that you have too much, however, if you lie and you say you have a lot more than your family actually does, then your aid is not going to be enough and you probably won't be able to afford it. So be as truthful as possible. And they will ask for evidence later on. They can email you asking for a proof or a tax return or whatever. And then results would come out at the end of March slash the beginning of April. So it's less than a year from now. Good luck with that. Sorry about the dog. And then here's what you need to get into university in the U.S. I kind of split this into two categories. The first one is what I knew I needed because it's all over the university's website. And then the second one is what you're not really told, but that I learned while being there. And I learned these the hard way. So the first one, what they tell you, a strong academic performance. I think that's a given for universities worldwide. They do want to see good grades. Um, I think that if you did worse than say you're eight or nine or 10 or whatever, but you show a gradual improvement, that's good enough. You don't need to have good grades your entire life. So I think progress is a good large chunk of it because it shows that you haven't really peaked in high school. So the probability is that you're going to peak in university. And then strong admission essays, I can't stress how important these are. These are like the IA, the extended essay. They're not things you want to leave until the last minute. And I'm a bit of a hypocrite for saying this because I, I did leave them for the last minute and it just made me so much more stressed. I didn't do my IAs over the summer holiday, didn't do my extended essay, and then I had to deal with the application, the essays, the SATs, the subject tests, um, just IB exams in general, like the, the exams in high school, and then all those essays in one semester. So it was a really bad time. It was very stressful. I think I got insomnia for a good chunk of it really start now i i know people say that all the time but really do it's a good advice and then extracurriculars these are i think what really helped me stand out in my application because i i did a lot just to make sure that i was unique i usually competed i signed up for a lot of different projects just anything that gave me a small edge that would make me seem a bit more interesting i think i'll show you some examples on the next slide i think some of you might know already about what I'm talking about. And then the second one, what universities don't tell you, um, this might sound a bit harsh, and I'm not trying to discourage people from applying. It's, it's not the point, but just be aware of these things because I didn't really know about them, and I think that they could have helped me if I had these in mind. So universities in the U.S. are significantly more expensive than European ones. Um, the average university costs somewhere around seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars per year, so that's about a quarter of a million dollars for four years of education. 
Um, so I definitely recommend that you look into your parents' finances, see if you can afford these. But do keep in mind that you get financial aid. So if you're especially good, you can get a scholarship. If not, you can get some other forms of aid, like a grant. So I suggest just applying and seeing what they give you. If you can't go, then some of the universities are bound to accept you. So just go easy on your financial status. And then the second one, is, it's very important. I hadn't really heard about the word legacy in the context of universities. What they basically mean is that someone in your immediate family has gone to that university. So that includes your siblings or your parents. Um, lots of universities, especially the, the Ivies, they really care about prestige and about family. So if your parents have gone to that university, then really play into that. It's very useful for you. They care a lot about it. I think 60% of the admitted class of Harvard are legacies. So just know that if you don't get into your number one university, more times than not, it's not really your fault. It's more that your background wasn't really suited to the university, but your grades and your extracurriculars were good enough. So just be aware of this kind of small bias that might work against you. And then first generation status, this is basically where you're the first person in your family to go to university. So that really helps you in your application because what it's basically saying is that in all the history of my family, I am the first person to go to university. I worked the hardest, I got the furthest. So that's very useful. They love that because people are minorities usually since going to college has become increasingly more popular. And then the second, the fourth one, sorry, is minority again. If you're part of a certain ethnic group or just even a religion, maybe talk about that in your essays. They like seeing minorities because university in the U.S both need and like having diversity so you know you know how you have like the the statements of we have students from over 50 countries in the world they like being able to add to that list to show people and other universities that they're better because they attract students from all over the world so i think that the fact that i'm romanian really helped me apply because i haven't found a single romanian student in nyu so i'm pretty sure i'm the only one which gives me a small edge because they didn't have someone with my um, citizenship. And uh, speaking of extracurriculars, just some things to get you thinking, maybe some ideas. Um, the first picture is from TEDx. So, okay, actually I'll go back to the NASA one. The NASA competition in, I think it was 2016. Um, I participated on my own. I got first place and I think that opened up doors for me everywhere because one, I got to go to the US and actually see these universities, which I've always wanted to do. Um, it got me the invitation to get the TED Talk, which please keep in mind, it was two years later, two and a half years later, and it was still relevant because the email I got said that they heard about me and my project and they want to have me over for a TED Talk. So you never know what small event could really just trigger a bunch of other opportunities for you, which look great on your application. Everything on here are things that I included in my application in my extracurricular. The second one is the World Scholars Cup. It seemed like a, like a fun thing to do at the beginning. I wasn't really focused on it because it's a lot to learn. And I mean, on top of IB, you don't really want to be studying more and reading more than you have to. But it was a great experience. I got to travel a bit before graduating, which you won't really have time to do now unless it's like the summer holiday. I got to go to Barcelona and see Yale, which is in Connecticut. So that was amazing. It really helped my application. And then the other one is just a conference that was part of the the NASA competition that I was invited to. I got to meet a lot of people. I got their business cards, which is very useful. I could email them and, I don't know, maybe get recommendation letters from them. You never know when someone or having a connection might come in handy. So really, any opportunity you get, just, just go for it. You don't have to win. You just have to have the experience and then just make it seem like it's a lot more impressive than it actually is. And then these are some tips or important things that I wish I knew and I think you should know. Make sure you take your SATs or ACTs early because you can retake them as many times as you want. They don't ask for your previous grades. I didn't know about this, so I took mine in October and one more time in December. And my grade improved drastically, so that's a very good idea. Take them as many times as you want. It doesn't matter. Just start studying pretty early. Don't leave these until the last minute because, like me, you have to deal with your IA's extended essay, your application, and these exams on top of it. So 
finished in love with the summer holiday i think they're available in june or july you have to check that and then my second point is make sure you're reading about the university you're applying to because your essays need to reflect an interest in that particular university you can't just be saying things like i want to go to your university because i love the location and you have a good program a bunch of students can easily come up with the same ideas like you so why is this university different than the one next door or the one from a different state they want to feel like they're special i mean these universities are looking for students who will give back to them because you're an asset to them but if you're not going to give anything back then why should they admit you so do your reading make sure you know the smallest details about them like if you know about a specific professor and a, a paper he wrote that really interested you talk about that just something specific and focused my third point is the location of the university is incredibly important i mean on top of looking at the title and the ranking look at where it is located geographically for example two ivies um, ivy leagues um, brown and cornell they they're really good universities but they're located in a very rural area there's nothing nearby it's just forest so think about what you'll do after you graduate. I mean, you want to have a career lined up afterwards. Where are you going to work in a small city? If you look for somewhere like, say, you know, Harvard, MIT, even NYU, just to kind of you know, throw it in there, they're located in New York and in Boston, which are, you know, very urban areas, lots of business. You have Wall Street in New York. So if you're looking for business, you can't be closer to the hub that is business. So just keep that in mind. And then visa application restrictions, read into these. Getting your visa is easy once you're admitted. So don't really stress about that. You're not going to get rejected. Just know that you can't really work like other students. You have a restriction on it, a certain amount of hours. So just keep that in mind and read over them because I accidentally took an internship a couple months ago and I found out that legally I can't. So that caused a big problem for me. Just don't do that. And um, I think that's all I have for now. If you guys have any questions, and here's my contact info. If you have any questions, I'll just leave this up. It's my email. Okay, Ariana, thank you very much.